everybody, and welcome back. It's that time again. It is 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. My name is Guy, just sitting out here on my porch enjoying my coffee. I'm so glad you joined me. We've created this show essentially to make gardening uh, so much easier for you. You know, gardening is supposed to be a time where you can relax and kind of, you know, be at one with your property and plant stuff and have a good time. It's not supposed to be stressful. So what we've set out to do is fill our show with lots of fun and cool items that are gonna make gardening fun for you. As you know, uh, we have uh, the traveling mailbox, which goes wherever I go. And this uh, basically is how we get feedback from you guys. So when you hear this sound. Hey, guy. You've got mail. That's that's my call to open up the mailbox. Let's see. Oh, hey, look, we got stuff. That's awesome. Hey, we want to say hi to our friends who joined me last week. So this is a shout out to our Facebook buddies. We got uh, Dennis, Cheryl, Donna, Mohammed, and Lisa, who loves the show and they love our new set. So thanks, Lisa, for that comment. Remember to join me live on Facebook today. Uh, just uh, give us a shout there. Go to hsn.com. Gonna put that back in. Send that back to the mailman. Uh, just give us a shout, and uh, we would love to uh, take your questions and all that stuff. Anyway. You know what's the key to a nice garden? You gotta add little, it's little details, right? That's what sets somebody's garden apart. You drive by somebody's uh, neighborhood and you say, what is that little sparkling, beautiful little spinning piece of artwork in their garden? Well, chances are it comes from Wind and Weather. Wind and Weather have been around since 1976. They're world renowned for their outdoor decor. And they have created these wonderful things we call swirl spinners. They're only $29.95 today. All you do is hang them anywhere in the garden. And basically the wind and the weather is what activates them, right? The sun will make it sparkle and the wind will drive the kind of little turbine that kind of spins around and around. It's perfect on any patio, any porch, any deck. Now you won't get the lovely Carrie Mobley to do it, uh, to set it up for you, but she is offering it and presenting it to us yes. today. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Um, I, love that, I love that I'm having all my favorite guests. Everybody uh, comes yes. and they visit with, it's one hour. Sit down, relax, have some coffee. And imagine if you were sitting and looking out your window and you saw this just kind of delicately spinning from the wind. They are beautiful. They're top of the line materials are what they're made of. That is what wind and weather is known about. And we have how many designs today? Three. Three, yep. Three of our okay. favorite icons, right? And I, I was telling my husband, I said, between the butterfly, the dragonfly, and the hummingbird, we've pretty much nailed what most women find some kind of fascination with. I happen to be a lover of butterflies. Um, wind and weather, like you said, they've been around since 1976. They are the top in the industry for well-made, engineered products that are meant to be outside. They can handle the elements. This is like bling for your yard. We've got these dancing butterflies or the hummingbird, of Look course. This one. I like like that, that's gorgeous, isn't it? And oh then here gosh. is the dragonfly. Now, these will go any place you want to hang them. You can hang them on the porch. Um, I have mine personally on a shepherd's hook. Yeah. I actually have uh, one of the lanterns that my girlfriend Rebecca sells, and I have one hanging on each side. So my entire outdoor space is just adorned with these beauties. I love the little gem at the bottom. This is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. so you're going to get, during the sunlight, these little glistens. Yeah, now, our yeah. fins, which are these swirls, right, they are specifically designed with a little curve to them to make sure that they can catch the wind. The wind so yeah. any place that you're going to get a little breeze, it's just going to give you this delicate dancing. The colors are so spring-like, and yeah. this is just a whimsical, beautiful piece to have, uh, you know, surrounding your outdoor space, whether or not you have a green thumb. It's still that pop of color well, and whimsy. Right, and like you said, even when you don't have flowers, blooming you will always have that color out there in the garden um, remember you can hang this anywhere it, it, it'll go off a leaf or a branch if you yep. want to run it in the front of your house and hang it from a string you could do that it has a little hook so you can hook it up anywhere but I love that it's instant decor and these are take it from the gardening guy these are little things that aren't expensive that set your property apart. And, and that's really, that's why people, I mean, people do gardening for several reasons. One, they want their home to look pretty. They want the exterior of their house to look good. But people do it, I think, for the, for the feeling that it gives them inside. Like it's a peace, it's a calm, it's like, I mean, listen, I, I don't have, I have a tiny little yard. I don't have anything planted in the ground other than trees and shrubs in the front, but on my, deck outside I just got I've got well I've got tomato plants growing right now I have herbs growing right now I have uh, the mini roses that we're offering today I have those growing out there uh, what else do I have lavender growing out there oh wow and I yeah. walk outside and I'm just like this is my little space whether, I'm, whether I'm having coffee right. in the morning or a glass of wine at night 
that I can hang out. And and this is these it's these little details. And I could easily right now I have chimes right. out in the corner. I don't have this yet because this is new. Right. But I would I would put this maybe even in the front of the house in the entryway to my house, like it where the front door is, just to have something different. And you can't I mean you can't go wrong with this. There's no maintenance on it. The wind as it, and it'll just be the slightest breeze as it gets going. It'll just continually spin. You saw me. I spun it one time and the thing spun forever. It's still forever. going. Right. It right. just goes and goes. Most popular right now is the dragonfly but remember I have the butterfly and I have the hummingbird uh, the only difference is um, is just that the body color and the bug color is a little bit different but they all are very colorful they all have the jewel hanging at the bottom right right they have a center rod which stabilizes and balances it and then it has the little turbiney um, you know squiggly things that yes, go around the, our fins. the wind. we call them yeah. the fins. fins so this is um, powder coated steel so it's meant to handle the elements this is gonna last you for years and years and we've got that great ombre effect, the color changing, the way that this just dazzles. And there are these beautiful little gems in between each of the dragonflies or butterflies or hummingbird, whichever you choose. And it's just giving you that whimsy. I like what you were saying about it being your oasis. This is a chance for you to show your personality in your garden. When people come in to your property or where they're outside with you, um, you know, maybe having a, a cup of tea or some lemonade in the morning or on a hot summer day when they look around is this something that speaks to you and could start a conversation and like for me it would give me an opportunity to talk about my mom and our love of butterflies and so these are just the great pieces that wind and weather are known for they're unique they're different you can't these aren't things that you can get just anywhere uh, wind and weather I grew up looking through their catalogs and this is just one of those pieces that uh, honestly I'm using this in one of my kids yeah. Uh, fifth grade banquets it's just these bright fun oh, spring colors look, i'm watching this one and it's like the hummingbirds <laughs> and the flowers and in fact i feel like i'm a like i'm on a flower trip <laughs> Just it poked and it popped, went away. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. I'll be working in those clever little comments from time to time, so just yeah. bear with me on that. Perfect. All right, extremely pos uh, uh, popular, as I said before. If you want this, Dragonfly is, is uh, the most popular. Hummingbird took the oh, lead. Oh, everybody knew it. They well, love well, the hummingbird. Well, let me tell you something. If you, love, if you love hummingbirds, you gotta keep watching. I have a hummingbird feeder, a two pack of them coming up later. You wanna know why you don't see a lot of hummingbirds in your yard? Cause you're not giving them anything to eat. This is a great way to be able to get hummingbirds to come to your house. That's coming up in a little bit. Also wanted to tease this fountain. All right, I will tell you, before you go and you spend 300 or four, or $500 on some little rock fountain, get our fountain for $42. First of all, it's battery powered. You don't have to run any wires to it. 150 hours of enjoyment on a battery, on the batteries, right? And you simply stick it in whatever has water in it. You can put it in a bucket, in a plant or whatever, and it creates that wonderful sort of zen, peaceful feeling that you need. I have it in two different colors. Uh, it comes in bronze or it comes in the antique white. Ooh, that looks like real stone, right? It's not, doesn't weigh 100 pounds. So you don't have to worry about that. It is $42.95 and worth every penny if you've always wanted to have a garden fountain. Now you can. All right. Hey, guess what time it is, everybody? You know what time it is now? It's a little thing we call grow time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I love this show. You know what it is? It's just fun and peaceful and it's great. I know it's March and maybe you still have some snow on the porch. Don't worry about it, spring is coming and it's time to order your flowers. Now, let me tell you before we get started that when you order, and I only have, I have 500 of these to go around, okay? This is the four piece, four varieties of what we call summertime mini roses. These things are gorgeous. I'm growing them right now in my yard. I'm, uh, they're about this tall right now and I can't wait for, and I'm putting them in already and it's Florida. Um, but around the country, you'll have different growing zones. These will ship when they're ready to be planted. Here's the map. The reason I like to say this before Rochelle comes out is I want you to understand you don't pay for these unless they ship. So if you're from Florida 
and it says March 4th, yes, you're going to pay now. But if you are up from, you know, the Dakotas or, or maybe up uh, Montana way where it gets a little bit colder, you know, way up north, then yours are not going to ship probably until more like April or May. But then you don't pay for them until they go into shipping. So all you're doing now is making sure that you get the best of the best, and that's what Leaf and Petal does. No home store leftovers, no little root balls starving for water because they sat on a shelf for three weeks without being yep. transplanted. These are all, uh, they're all taken from the best growers around the country. Uh, we curate all these flowers and then we bring them to you. This is a four pack. This is Rochelle Grayer who joins us. She is our, hey. uh, our master uh, architect, landscape designer, all yes, that stuff. Yes, yes. She knows what, what to do. And I will tell you these flowers, they're beautiful. Far and away. And this is what they're going to look like yeah, when they come in four. full. All right. Now, these are a perennial, so these will come back year they after will. year. Yep. Look at the colors. And to be honest, these are amongst the hardiest roses. 400 so these, left. That's how yeah, fast they're going. They are, um, these are going to be good from north to south. So if you are way, way up there, zone four, yeah. you can still grow these. Let's um, go for the varieties because so I know we don't have a lot of this time. This one is my favorite. This is called Cupcake. Okay. This beautiful light pink blush. Pink. I mean, that's just my favorite. Oh my um, gosh. This is Stars and Stripes. And this one's beautiful because literally these petals, they're striped. They're actually red and white. This is Rainbow's End. Uh, right now they're yellow because they're just blooming, but as they mature, they're gonna get red tips on the edges of these flowers. They'll be even prettier. And then this one here is Fireworks. So that's one's our kind of oh, orangey red. Nick, yeah. it's a little red on I, the tips I too. love these because I don't normally see an orange rose like this. Those and multicolor really too, like different colors they of orange. They fade in and yeah. out. Yeah, they change over the, the yeah. life of the bloom, which is really nice. One thing I, that I know you love about them and I love about them too is these are easy to grow. That right? is the whole point. That is the whole point of leaf and petal. We want to make you feel like you're an awesome gardener because it's really not that hard. If you get the right plants, you put them in the right place, you've, they've been grown well, they've been bred well, they're going to perform for you. And so that's what we're all about is figuring out across the country for gardeners, making them look like all-star gardeners. Oh That's my gosh. And look at how compacted it is with, with blossoms too. That's what I love about mini roses. They are. It's not like a regular rose bush, which is pretty difficult to grow. These it are It grows easy. vertically and it kind of gets tippy and when you get a big... And they don't have good thing. foliage either. No, they can no. be kind of... Eh, and, and they yeah. are not so pest resistant. These ones, um, the, the great things about these is they grow on their stock, their yeah. own stock, which makes them much hardier than uh, other roses that are often grafted yeah. on other stock. And so they don't have that natural hardiness that these mini roses do. Rochelle, we have a question from Tracy who's on yeah. Facebook with us and she wants to know, do you, uh, would, do these like sun or do these like shade? They like sun. Okay. So when you get them, um, they're going to prefer sun. You don't yeah. want to put them in the deep shade. They can take a little uh, my, partial shade. Mine get about five hours of yeah, sun a day. Yeah, that's a plenty. And I move them a little bit while they're little. I've been moving them just because I have time. Yeah. But when you get them, let me show you Look how they come. Look at this. Come. Yeah, they're going to come um, four, all four, one in each. And they're going to come. They're nicely packed. So this isn't going to, you're not going to open this up and no. get a, uh, you know, mess of dirt. Mine I've are, had that happen I, I put before. mine in t uh, 12 days ago. They're doubled in size. Yeah. Mine have already So doubled. they're each labeled. Yeah. Well, and just to that, I want to show you. This is what it will look like the first season. So look. this is, this is huge. I mean, from this little guy here to uh, just a few <laughs> weeks later, a month or so later. And then these are a representation of what you'll get in the second year. Talk about, yeah, we're going to go a little bit longer. I have 300 left if you want to get it. Hold, bring that one back up yeah. really quickly, yeah. Rochelle, because you mentioned this the last time we were here, yeah. about how they grow and the oh, little compacted. Oh, okay, so that, yeah. that is what I love. So most uh, roses, a lot of the ones that we're used to, um, they're like the long stem ones it's that one you rose. get. It's one rose. It's one big stem with one rose. Whereas this, I'm just we'll going to... We'll, um, we'll pull one of them out. Yeah, here, let me, just, let me pull just that break one that Cut off. It? Okay. Look at this. Um, there's one, two, three, six, eight, seven or eight blooms on one stem. So if you're going to uh, be cutting this and using this for, you know, uh, bringing it in the house, yeah. look at all these flowers. I mean, we, we peeled off um, some of the leaves on this so that it's not too bushy here, but Look at those flowers. I Look mean, you get all that on one little stem. Yeah, so, so if you're doing just, cuttings or whatever yeah, you said. Yeah, I mean, for whatever yeah. you like to use them for, I mean, who doesn't like to bring flowers in from the garden and put mm. a little vase on your, on look your at, table Look at all the blossoms. Something. Look at all the petals. You know, I have a saying. Petals, please. <laughs> Do you? There it is. Petals. What? Blooming good ideas? Is that the right one? <laughs> Are we supposed please. to be petals, please? See, I'm doing my part. Petals, We're going to get there. All right, we, we, all right, how many left uh, in this one? Aaron, 
Okay, so uh, Aaron, our producer, says we have 350 left. So if you want to get it, they're going to sell out. Grab them, yeah. grab them, grab them. Uh, we're going to shift gears. We're going to talk about tomatoes yes. in just a second. Then we're going to give you some other uh, information on growing and all that stuff. Well, just to mention, yeah. too, that these are guaranteed. So not only are the perennials are going to come back, but if they don't come back, we're going to guarantee it. Guaranteed. So uh, okay. You can give us a call and we'll uh, help you figure out how to get a new one. All right, I want to really give you a quick, we were going to put this in the show, but we didn't have time. So this is a railing planter. I have one of these, only mine is actually rectangular. This one is kind of oval, uh, like a long oval shape. It's really, uh, a really kind of a cool design. You can put this over any, uh, basically a fence, a railing, whatever. It fits over, it disappears when the plants grow, and it is gorgeous. It takes advantage of space you normally would never take advantage of, and it brightens up a property. It's $22.95. It come to us from improvements, and you could put all kinds of stuff. It's also great for herb gardens, like out on your deck. And you don't have to put them on the ground. You can put it right on the railing, which makes it easy to go out there and get your cuttings when you need them. So anyway, that's available. And the item number 641373. Okay, we're going to go to something that I also am growing, which is the uh, the tomato medley, as I call it. Yes. If you are a fan of tomatoes, and I am one of those people that says, when you if you get the opportunity to grow something that's better when it's grown at home, go for it. Because there are certain things like cucumbers and stuff. A cucumber tastes like a cucumber. It does, yeah. Tomatoes, when you grow them yourself and you get them fresh, when they're packed with sugar and all that flavor... They're they're like a totally different thing. Totally different animal, and they're amazing. This is, and I know this is gonna sell out. We're gonna give you four different varieties for $19.95. You don't pay for them now, you pay for them when they ship in your growing zone. So this is just a way to order them. Do not go to the home store and get the picked over leftovers. Get your own. That is what, th this is an example of what it's gonna look like. That is like. one plant over this there, and you're one, gonna get four. Look at all the tomatoes on this plant. It's crazy. And we're gonna give you four different varieties. To me, this is hands down, it's, I mean, just one of the best things. If you've never bought from Leaf and Petal, you should grab these. So let's talk about the tomatoes that yes. they get. So there's and four the varieties. varieties. I want you to try these. Oh my gosh. So these are the Cherokee, uh, Cherokee tomatoes. And they are yeah. actually from seeds it's that like were sugar. discovered a couple years ago, a few years back. Look at that this. They found their origins. They, they date back to the Cherokee Nation. They grew them. They're actually... Michelle, this, this doesn't even need dressing on I it. I know. They're so good, right? Oh, my gosh. So that is the Cherokee. They're these beautiful dark. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing about this collection is that <gasps> we call it the Look booty collection. Because you're a foodie, right? Totally. Yeah. It's 20 years in the restaurant business. <laughs> so here's the yeah. tomato sliced. Yes, and I wanted to give you that. an idea of look at the color. That's and look the at rainbow. the size. They're huge. And this is it. We've cubed it up. Look at the skin they're on it. So, and you see that beautiful color. And that color goes right through. And they're so delicious. You can put a little salt on it. Mm. These are just <laughs> gorgeous and delicious. So you get the Cherokee. You oh get the rainbow. Gosh. And you get the mortgage lifter. That's these guys. I mean, look <laughs> at these. Oh, you have the big, big nice tomato. One. They're huge. Like pounds <laughs> of tomato. tomato in one tomato. Um, it's like two tomatoes didn't want to. They didn't want to grow away. They were the like, we want to be together, huh? Yeah. Do you know the story behind this tomato? No, no, no. So this this is called the mortgage lifter, and it was named by a guy who, in the Depression era, he started breeding wait, tomatoes and growing them in West Virginia. And he uh, he discovered this tomato. He sold them all that he had, six thousand tomatoes for a so buck a piece, and he paid off his mortgage. So you call from the mortgage lifter. I love it. I love it. And then, of course, you get those little fun grapey the tomatoes. The little Juliettes. These Juliettes. are beautiful. They're like kind of like tiny little Roma tomatoes, but they're really sweet. And they're really delicious, and they're great if you um, want to put Look them in it. a salad. Like, we've got them in a salad here. I, I love showing the close-up of slicing this tomato. Look at how beautiful this tomato is. First of all, oh look God, at the meat so of the tomato. Today. And see how when I'm slicing it, the seeds don't come scrunching out because it's perfectly... Look at... And also I mean, even a sharp knife. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> use a very sharp knife. Look at how beautiful this is. Uh, you see how compact the seeds are and all that. You're going to get all of these. And then take a look again. I'll walk over and look at this. Is, this is what one plant has the potential so to look like. So do you like. know why this looks like this? There are two kinds of tomatoes. We call them determinate and indeterminate. Determinate are bush varieties of tomatoes, whereas indeterminate keep growing. That's yeah. why these ones are all of these varieties. We've got three heirlooms and one hybrid. The Juliets are the hybrids, but yeah. they're indeterminate, which means they just keep growing. They get really big like that. And you can stake and them, which also, you should. Yeah, you should. Yeah. And you... Um, you just, it, they're, they're going to keep throwing out fruit. Whereas the bush varieties, well, they throw it out once and then they're done for I, the season. Which, These are going to go and go and go. I love that because that'll take you through the entire season. Remember, this will be delivered when it's time to plant in your region. So you don't have to do any guesswork. You know, sometimes you go to the home store and you're talking to somebody. When do, when do I plant them? And they're like, I, you know, you may not get the yeah. guy that knows. We're going to send them to you. So if you live in... 
whatever, Georgia, we know yep. exactly when to send these to you. If you live in Washington, we know exactly when to send them to yep. you because your growing zones are different, which makes good sense. Um, okay, we are extremely busy on this. It's a $20 bill to be able to get your tomatoes home. Let's go to the phones while we have a chance. And we're gonna say, hello, welcome into HSN. My name is Guy, this is Rochelle. Who am I talking to and where are you from? Uh, my name is Thomas, and I'm calling from Schenectady, New York. All right, oh, Thomas, welcome to the show. Did you pick something up in the show, Thomas? Yes, I did. I picked up the roses, and I picked up the tomatoes. Well, oh, excellent. Thomas, take a look at what you're going to have in a couple of months there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those tomatoes. Well, you're in New York, so I'm from Connecticut. Yeah, so you're growing. Yes, I did. I picked up the um, roses and the tomatoes. Right, so you're going to be getting those delivered probably, I would say, in April. Yes, uh, now, late April. Late April, you'll get those, Thomas. Maybe early May. You won't pay for them till they ship. But are you? A, uh, do you like to garden? Are you new to gardening? Tell me your experience. I've been gardening for the past 10 years. I'm not that great at it. I'm trying to get better. And these look like great products, <laughs> and they look easy to grow. Yes. They are easy to grow. And you know the thing that I love about this is when you go to the garden center, um, not only are they picked over, but particularly with tomatoes, there's usually dozens of varieties. Right. And which one? You have no idea, right? Right. We have thank you, Thomas. curated, yeah, thank you. Um, we have curated this set really to highlight tomatoes that are delicious and that are gonna help you make that real gourmet yeah. culinary presentation. Let so me, the big, they're really big, they're really you colorful. Look at this. You're gonna get a, something of everything. You got the the nice red ones, the so, rainbow, the, the Cherokees, and then the little Juliettes. So you got a little bit of everything. Yeah. You can do so much with these and, and really have fun with well, cooking look, and Yeah, look and at the making, variety. I mean, that's just beautiful. If you're having a party mm -hmm. and you put these out, I mean, these are like main course stuff. This yeah. is like a vegetarian's dream right here, right? Yeah, because no tomatoes can be very uh, sort of fickle in a way. When you, buy, when you buy them at the store, you have no idea. Some nope. people say you can smell them. You're spending five or six dollars a pound on the good brand of tomatoes. And even yep. them, I've gotten those home and they are dry on the inside. Yes. Uh, you know, this way, you know when they're, when the color is full and they're on your, your bush over here or in your yeah. tomato plant, they're ready to pick. Well, just think about the economics of that though. $5 a pound, that means this tomato is gonna cost you $10. <laughs> exactly. That's, I mean, and you're gonna get tons of these on four different for, plants. Oh, you'll, I mean, get so, hundreds, I mean, you'll get hundreds, hundreds of dollars worth hundreds. of tomatoes. You'll hundreds of dollars worth of tomatoes. For 20 so, bucks. For 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, that is a, just a bargain. And I love honest. that you know when to buy them because they'll be shipped to your house when they're ready. You don't pay for them now. Secure your order. You wanna be like my friend Thomas and you wanna be impressing everybody in the neighborhood with your gorgeous tomatoes. This is the way to do it. It is 643459, another one of the brand new items that we have from Leaf and Petal. Uh, we love this stuff. And I, are you going to be here again next week, I hope, with I more stuff? So, yep, you yep. better be. All right, Rochelle, thank you so much. Hey, uh, I was talking earlier about hummingbirds. You know the key to hummingbirds? You got to have a hummingbird feeder. They're not going to come unless you live in the tropics where you have hibiscus plants and things like that. Hummingbirds are not going to come unless you give them food. And this is our little nectar tray. You get two of these. We give you the recipe on how to make the nectar. It's basically just a sugar water uh, combo. And the hummingbirds will come. They can sense it. Uh, I only have 400 left, all right? And you get two, so you can put one in the front yard and the backyard. You can also convert them to a seed feeder by popping the top off and doing that very, very easily. 652699, that's coming up in a bit. I'm gonna get those because I miss my hummingbirds. I used to get hummingbirds in Arizona. Uh, they're pretty popular down there, but hummingbirds birds are all over. But they go for certain types of flower and nectar and they go to places who have hummingbird feeders. So get two of them and get the hummingbirds coming to your house. All right. All right, everybody, everybody be quiet for a minute, all right? Including you, the dorky guy on the screen. Everybody be quiet. I want you to listen to something. You ready? Listen. It's a fountain. Is there anything more What's peaceful that? and more tranquil oh. than a beautiful fountain? But normally when we think of fountains, we think hundreds of dollars. I got to plug it in. I got to make sure the circuit breaker's on. I got to... These run on battery power. Get up to 150 sure. hours more. of use on one set of batteries, which is days and weeks and weeks and weeks of using this without having to change the batteries. It's from Belmont Garden. Belmont Garden specializing in battery operated fountains. They are the name to go to and these are gorgeous. The lovely Lorna Co is here. Hello, my Good dear. Morning, I am guy. so glad to see you today. So nice to see you. This is such a great idea because I think everybody loves a fountain. 
Guy, we all love water. We need water to survive. Exactly. But we also love the soothing, calming yeah. sounds of water. And up until now, we have not been able to get fountains unless you have an external power source. Right. You have to have a plumber, an electrician. Sure. And if you have a solar fountain, <laughs> you need the sun to work. With this, it is a self-contained fountain and pump system, runs off batteries. You don't need wiring, you don't need plumbing in. You just need water guy, push a button and it turns any container into a fountain that looks like it cost hundreds of dollars. Look at this in seconds. <laughs> I okay. love it. I love it. By the way, I have it in two colors. I have it in the bronze, which is here. And then I also have it in the antique white. You can see in front of me this size. I like this size. I know we do a smaller one, but I like this size myself. It's more substantial. Uh, can I put this indoors and out? You can put it indoors, outdoors. You can put it on a table. And in seconds, you can have a fountain that looks grand and majestic like it cost hundreds of dollars you also get four dancing water features to change up that look so I love this one this is the umbrella oh. so look at that like something from a stately home in England yes you've also got the pirouette this is amazing guy the water dances oh, it, it leaps it moves You've got the shower spray, which gives instant height, instant grandeur. Oh, that's the look, one. It's changed like to look in seconds. You get I love all this these? one. You get all four of them. And then you get the spinner. <laughs> look at that one. Which makes the water move in a different way, sound a different way. And I want to point out, we've got the ones on the table here. But if you think in your house, maybe you've got your grandmother's old urn or an old pail or a wheelbarrow, you can put this in anything that holds water. So we've again created a fountain here. Looks like it cost a couple of hundred dollars. You don't need wiring. You don't need a power source. You don't need a plumber. You just need water and four D cell batteries. And then over here behind us, Guy, yeah. we've got an even bigger one. So you might think, I've had that urn for over years. Here. Over here. Yeah, we can walk over. And I've never had anything to put in it. Well, look at this. If you put in the fountain, just choose your bronze or your white, you've got an instant feature. Looks like it's made of real stone. It's been there for years and years, and it looks like it costs so much more. And, and I love the fact that you can put this anywhere. As Lorna was saying, because you have no wires and you have no cords, you don't have to dig anything. Or, or You know, if you see a cord, it kind of ruins the whole effect. This is completely on its own because it works on batteries, so it enables you to put it in any place, in any room. It does. It's completely weather is, uh, weatherproof because it's water. It's made to go outside, but you can use it inside as well and instantly hit the button and watch what happens. And Instant this is the fountain. bubbler. And if you think Mother's Day is coming up the 12th of May this year, and you've got some pots like this, you know, she's in her garden hanging around or on a balcony, instead of maybe a bouquet of flowers that can cost up to $50 on average, right. imagine this, a water feature in seconds that's so easy to install, so fun to use, and you don't need any tools. No. You don't need any Out of the box and in the water. Even put it in a hanging basket. Attract birds and nature to your garden. You know, animals, there's already a five-star review online. And yeah. the lady said her cat likes to drink from it. I mean, you know, <laughs> the if limits are endless. Look at this one. Hey. And then... I will tell you, you know how expensive fountains are? Fountains are, even when you go to the home store, fountains oh. are, they start at like $150, right? Absolutely. And you have to buy all the extra stuff to go along with it, and you have to maintain it. All you need to do, and watch, Lorna will do okay, this live. Okay, I'm going to show you now how in seconds... Put it in the water. Put it in the water, push a button, and then you've got an instant fountain, and it has a 24-hour timer. That's what I love about this. You set it for one to four hours by simply pushing that button one to four times, and then every day at the same time so yeah. guys say you come home at six o'clock you want a nice glass of wine or a cup of tea read your book this is going to come on for you set it and forget it relax and then it will shut down for you as so well it's totally automatic it is so that easy saves to on use. batteries so you don't have to worry about forgetting about it so it does everything okay i am extremely busy two choices you either go antique white which lorna is showing you right now or you do the bronze color which i have in front of me it really depends on what your taste is what your garden is like but i am telling you for 21 dollars 48 on flex pay we just broke the payment in half. Just pay for half, get it home, put it outside, pick any vessel. So it could be a pot, it could be an old bucket. I like the old-fashioned galvanized I do. bucket. I love them. And very yeah. quick tip, if you've got something that doesn't hold water, don't worry. If you get something like this, just a plastic container, put it inside your vessel. Right. That make, You only need three to four inches of water to make this run. So even an old wheelbarrow, get yourself a container, put it inside, and then you are set to go with a water feature in seconds.
fountains. You know what I love is that no, normally people that have water fountains are like rich people. Yeah. Right? You ever go like, the, you know, I've been to France and if you have a water, you ever have a big fountain yeah. that's usually made of something, you can have this and you can get that same relaxing peace, a feeling of peaceful and tranquil waters bubbling in your yard. Great job, Miss Lorna. Thank you. It's good to Thank see you. Thank you. So good to Thank see you. you. What a great, I love this. Oh, I hear the birds. Do you hear the birds? Ooh. You know what time it is? It's time to feed the birds. Let's go over. <laughs> hear them tweeting? They're all over the place. So we like to feed our birds every day. And remember the key, whether you're feeding hummingbirds or regular birds, you gotta bring food out for them. My dad used to put do like the peanut butter thing. And then he'd put that like on like a, a corn cob. He'd soak it in peanut butter. Then he'd roll it in seeds. And the birds, he had so many birds coming to his house. So anyway, make sure you feed them or they won't come. There you go. All right, all set. All right, speaking of birds, so that's for my regular birds, but here they're all they're all over the place. It's so beautiful. So that is my regular uh, bird feeder. I believe that one might be available. I don't know if we have that one on, on hsn.com, but you can check it out. Uh, we do have bird feeders, but what we've got next is our hummingbird feeder. Now, I lived out west. I lived in Arizona for a couple of years, and out in Arizona, I noticed that a lot of people had hummingbird feeders outside. And I was like, and I had never even seen that many hummingbirds in my life because I was from Connecticut, and I didn't see a lot of hummingbirds. And they told me there, they're like, if you want hummingbirds, you need to give them food. Um, because hummingbirds normally are attracted to things like tropical flowers and stuff like that. And depending on where you live, you may not have those, but they love nectar and they can sense nectar uh, from, uh, from anywhere. I have, how many do I have of these? I have, all right, I'm down to my last 400. You're gonna get two of these. It's from Smart Solutions. And basically what these are is, uh, these are a way to not only get them there, but to attract them with colors and with the little hibiscus flowers uh, that you that you see around. That's really the way uh, that this works. Uh, you have 32 different feed ports inside. Uh, Michelle England is here with me today. Hello I'm so, are you, there. do you have the broom today too? I do. Oh, man, I love that broom. I, we got the, the broom, broom is great. the coconut broom coming up, you gotta get. Anyway, I learned a valuable lesson that if you want, if you want hummingbirds, you have to give them some food. You have to yeah. feed them. Yeah. We have 32 ports here. Okay. There's plenty of room for all the birds to come up to the bar. Love it's it. it. This is a galvanized steel hook, so that it's not going to rust. And then you've got the polycarbonate. Um, bird feeder that's red which will last forever and it's gonna last forever we could stand on this it lasts forever so we made it red because the birds are attracted to the red makes sense and you don't want to use that red nectar because that's not good for them right so what you're Food gonna coloring. do we're gonna give you the recipe <laughs> right. exactly we're yeah. gonna give you the recipe it's four cups of water and one cup of sugar in the microwave simple it's a no-brainer I, I learned that too because I was out there one of the ones spending ten dollars on the on the bird uh -huh, stuff, and, on I was the like, and then I realized all it was was red food coloring and sugar yeah. and water yeah, not uh, good for them. Not, not good, good for them. them. So, so all you do, and, and you'll get that recipe to make it, and then you just fill it up, and, the, and then what you happens? You fill it up. Well, it, it holds up to two cups of water, and let me show you what you can do. Okay. You're just going to take the top and open it, and okay. you're going to fill Pour that with your nectar. Okay. Put it in. And then get your top on there. You know it's what that I, easy. What I love too about it, Michelle, is that it has these little these little perch areas that go all the way around. Right. That way, because you know, a hummingbird. When you think about how many thousands of times a minute or whatever it is that they're four thousand a minute. That's there crazy. There you go. They need a place to rest. The little brothers need a little place to hang out, right? <laughs> uh, and little sisters, they need to hang out somewhere. So they're they going to be able to. And look, that's you rarely see a hummingbird feeding when it can rest. They love that. They it's do. like a break for them. Well, uh, don't we all need a break? <laughs> we all want? need a break. So it's just a beautiful thing to hang in your garden. Yeah. So now, what are you going to do in the wintertime? Okay, so now when the, some of the birds haven't You've taken off. You've got some of those birds taking off. Right. And you can take that top off and fill it with some seed. Oh, and we'll cool. show, yeah. So, so it'll switch from a hummingbird nectar feeder over to a seed feeder. You yes, pop, we you will. You simply pop that top off. Right, you right, pop that top off. And put the seed and in. And put your seed in there. You can even fill that little area with water. Perfect, so they can get a little and drink. And so in the winter time okay. when your hummingbirds are gone, yeah. fill this up and let's feed the other birds. So Isn't awesome. that great? You get two of these today. They're only mm -hmm. $17.25 on FlexPay. If you've never shopped with us before, FlexPay is just a way to divide the payments up so you don't have to pay it all at once. You make the one payment, we ship it out to you, you get it in about a week or so, and you can start watching those hummingbirds come. And I love, hummingbirds are some of the most beautiful birds. Uh, they're you know they're, they're more rare than some of the other birds that you see, blue right. jays and robins and things like that. Hummingbirds, and 
basically because most people don't even recognize them. They think, you know, that's that's a, they think it's a bug. Yeah, because they you know, zoom you think it's a big in and moth, they make that and you're noise. Like, what is that? It's actually a hummingbird, hummingbird. Uh -huh. and they are wonderful. Um, and it's so, so tranquil just to yeah. go in your backyard. And wait for and, them to come. And wait for them or, to come. Or if you have kids or grandkids, you're like, oh, look, there's a hummingbird at the hummingbird. And you run yes. out and you're like so excited. Yes, and let me tell you, this is a true story. Sure. My mom was outside with her hummingbird feeder. She has four of these in her yeah. yard because she just loves the hummingbirds. One day she had a red coffee cup. A hummingbird sat on her coffee See cup. See that? Because Absolutely. they love the red color. She has so many. <laughs> now look, you're going to awesome. hang this in your backyard. This isn't pretty. No, this isn't no. gonna attract the hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. This is going to invite the hummingbirds into yep. your yard. Have them come, and they remember. They will, and remember, 1725 on FlexPay, 652669 mm -hmm. if you would like to pick that up. It's a two pack. You don't go anywhere because I know you've got that broom. I do. And I will tell you, the ultimate outdoor garden broom is coming up. Hundreds and hundreds of you ordered at our last show. But first, where's my, I gotta go over to the mailbox. I'll be you right back. Okay. Go you got mail. All right, do, I, do I have mail? I didn't hear. I guess I, <laughs> she said it. Oh, the mail thing's gotta be down. All right, I got mail again. Let's see what I got this time. Hi, Joe. Hi, Karen. Hi, Deanne. And hi, Lisa. Uh, these are all friends of ours that are uh, having fun with us today on Facebook. I hope your gardens are all growing well. Brittany wanted to know how many tomato plants can fit in one pot and can you leave them in the pot? Well, I will answer this because I can, I've, I've grown them myself. I have two tomato plants in one pot. My pot is about this big, which is ample room and it's about that deep. But you do have to remember those plants are gonna grow super, super big. So to be on the safe side, you can probably just go a single plant in one pot. Um, and then also um, you can, yes, I grow tomatoes in the pot. Just make sure it's not a little pot, you need one. You know, that's like a you know, five gallon or whatever. You need a really good one. But you can definitely plant these in the ground as well if you want. Uh, take them out to your garden. In fact, I have a tiller coming up at the end of this show that'll help get your garden soil ready. Um, but we have that available. So yes, these can go in the ground. They can go in a planter. They can go in the pot. Uh, but they do need to get a decent amount of sunshine every day. Obviously, anything with lots of flowers or fruit or uh, vegetables needs lots of flowers. So let's get to our broom. So uh, I'm gonna put that back in the mail and we'll send it back, put the thing up. All right, we're good to go. Hey, last week we uh, we um, brought out a brand new item and it was called the uh, outdoor garden broom. I will tell you, I have bought my share of brooms uh, and you know the kinds that they have, the ones that kind of fall apart pretty, pretty quickly. And then I discovered this broom. And what makes this so different, first of all, it is the ultimate all season room. A broom is what it's made of. This is almost completely composed of coconut. And we're gonna, I'm gonna let Michelle explain all that thing, but whether you have snow or slush, sand or dirt, leaves, or debris and much more this has a super durable construction that is going to last for years and years and years yet it is very lightweight very in your hand, lightweight uh -huh. right so tell me about it so you're holding a coconut i'm holding a coconut because it's mostly made from a coconut tree yeah now this is the frond Okay. Okay. We'll come in close. So hold yep. it, hold it kind of delicate. The there you go. Then you've got the husk. You've got this stuff right here. Yeah. Okay. And then the cute nut from the coconut. The Look nut at how cute the, that you is. You see that? And yep. then we put, what kind of wood do we have? And then this wood is poplar, so you don't need garden gloves because you're not going to get a splinter with this kind of see wood. See how smart they are? Yeah. Poplar is a very polished wood, right? So when you when you sand it down, there's no mm -hmm. splintering, yet it's lightweight. And, and by the way, it's very, very strong. Poplar is very, very strong. Very strong. Um, and you know, many of you, and I'm going to step behind gonna you here. I'm going to step right Many of here. you buy this, this, this broom here. And maybe you'll spend $15 on it. I don't know what you spend on these brooms, maybe $12 or $15 on this. And you wind up, I know it's really, it's, the sun came out today, but that's okay, that's we're okay. outside. You know these brooms, right? This one, which kind of starts to degrade the day you start to use it. It's not really set up to be a good sweeper. It's kind of like, do I go this way? Do I go that way? Whatever. This thing is just kind of a waste of money. And th all this is for is like maybe if you spill something in your house, like some glass, or, it's not really, really good. Why not trade up to a broom that does it all? And that's what the coconut broom does. I call it the coconut broom. That's what we That's call what it. Like and you it. know yeah. what's great about this? It's not going to lose its shape. No. It keeps its form. I mean, look how that just pops Very right strong. back up. It doesn't even want to curl up like right. your corn brooms do. This is going to get in all the corners, all the pavers. If you've got aggregate at the beach yeah, and you've that. got that wow. sand, you're going to get everything right out from in between those grooves 
Look at that. Without getting down yeah. there with, in, with anything else, okay? <laughs> on your wet pine needles, your wet leaves. I mean, you can't take a blower to wet pine needles. Right. You're gonna get right in those corners, right in between all of those grooves. Yeah. I yep. love it. I mean, it's Isn't ideal. It? I, and I have that I have that manhandled decking deck. material mm -hmm. here in and Florida. It's not, yep, and it's, it's wonderful. It, right, it's hard to clean, but that makes now, it easy. Now, have you ever had one of these cocoa mats? I think we've all thrown out quite a few of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we just can't quite get them clean. Well, now with this broom, the amazing broom is going to get the dog hair, the cat hair, the string, all that stuff that gets stuck in those you're not gonna have to throw that away anymore. I love it. That's amazing. And I am telling you, when you hold it in your hand, you'll realize just how lightweight it is, but you'll realize that even though these, uh, the the, the uh, bottom part of the broom is, uh, when you look at it, it's rigid. Look at it. It's, it's very, yep. very flexible, but it won't break. I mean, you can bend it, it doesn't break. It's just strong, but yet, at the same time, it'll get into all those nooks it and will. crannies. It will, and if you're a camper, this is great for clearing your camp area. You can sweep the dirt. Yeah. It, they're great for motor homes, indoor, outdoor carpet, well, all of that. And now it's March, right? So we're gonna have a lot of spring cleaning coming your way soon. So if you wanna get cleaned up, there it is. Yep, cleaning. you got your spring cleaning. If you wanna get cleaned up, this is good. You know I said in the beginning too, a lot, I, I found a lot of people online and, and stuff where I checked were using this now for getting like snow and sleet and slush off their, off their walkways. Absolutely. When you don't want to shovel, you just want to sweep it up really quick. Yep, my Works friend Ruth Ann in New Jersey, she when they have a light dusting of snow, she opens the door yeah. and goes just like this, walks right out, Look at easy that. breezy. If you have mulch or things like that or hard to yep. reach areas or maybe you got a spider web or something that you're trying to get rid of, exactly. this works perfectly. It's delicate enough to work in and around garden beds. And there's what I was showing there's you. There's the snow. Let me tell you, that thing is amazing as far as cleaning it. Take a little hose. I mean, don't forget, it's made out of coconut, uh, mostly coconut ingredients, coconut fibers and all that stuff. Coconuts live outside, so you can rinse this thing off. You can wash it off if you want. If you want to put right. a little soapy water, you can do that as well. But honestly, I've never had to clean it. I just, I leave it in the corner. You, yep. I use it as much indoors as I do outdoors. Yes, and you can hose them off, yeah. leave them outside. It's impervious to all weather conditions. Yeah. Now, what I'm gonna do in the garden is I'm gonna turn my broom into a rake. I'm gonna get my mulch and I'm gonna spread my mulch with sure. it. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Spread your pine needles. It's gonna get all all that out of there. Isn't that wonderful? Well, and I want you to look at the profile. It's not it's not heavy and bulky like a lot of other brooms out there because the material that they, that it's that's it's is used in it is so dang strong. And right. if you come up and you look, I want you to see, I don't know how close you can get to the actual uh, the actual broom itself. So look at the detail and what goes into how this is stitched and see how they go in between each one. That's mm -hmm. how they bind this down, right? right? So there's the quality and this is like hard as a rock right here. And then as you come in, you see the number of, of fibers that were used into that. And then they take part of the coconut shell. And if you can come in closer, you'll see that's actually that's actually coconut <laughs> right there. So we have the fiber, we have the frond, we have the shell, and then we use poplar on the handle. Even the little pull is made of the coconut fiber as well. The best part is it's the easiest broom. Like if you do the side to side, like I'm doing, I mean, it's one pass. I don't have any debris out here, but I can show you it is one pass, maybe two, and it really will dig in to whatever it is that you have to clean. It gets right in there, gets in, like you said, gets in all the nooks and crannies. I love this. And, and I, I like to leave it on the front porch. You and I, are th I was just there saying, decorative, right? Exactly. You leave, leave this, this on the front porch. Look at me. You tend to use it more because it's just yeah. right there. You don't have to go to the garage and retrieve it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And you know, wedding season's coming up. You can, yep. you can take this as a, as a bridal shower hey, gift. Mother's Day. Mom could use mother's a good broom. Mother's Day. And you know what? You might feel a little silly walking in with the broom. Not then me. somebody uses I it just, and, would, and realizes how great it. it is. That's what yeah. I do. What it looks like. <laughs> Once <laughs> somebody <laughs> grabs this broom and starts sweeping with it, they're right. instantly in love. You're going to love it. Thanks, Michelle. Thank take a peek you. at this and come right back. Woo.
We understand every woman's skin is unique. We offer real beauty solutions for individual needs of real women, empowering women to achieve healthy, radiant looking skin. Backed by over 30 years experience, made from important ingredients combined with advanced science for affordable skincare that truly works. Change the story of your skin and your life forever. Genuine beauty begins with skin. We use goat milk because we had it, and that's how our company started. But what we learned over the years is how beneficial goat milk is, not only for the skin, but for your body. Goat milk adds moisture to your skin. It's really the most amazing ingredient. People really do notice the hydration of their skin. The farm to skin difference only with Beekman 1802. again i thought i heard the mail thing uh yes uh, what's the name on this again it's don we have don and don has a question for us what was don's question is oh here it is oh don's got all kinds of stuff he wants to know if we have um patio rugs or uh, is it is i'm sorry i thought you said don Okay, then, you, then I thought you said she. Did you say he? Okay, so Don's a guy. All right, <laughs> sorry, Aaron, I'm just confused. <laughs> so Don wants to know if we have outdoor rugs, and we do have AstroTurf mats uh, available on hsn.com. Uh, so check that out. Thank you so much for my sound effect there. Anyway, don't ask questions. Hopefully I won't muck them up like I just did that one, but we'll get them to you. So Don, go to hsn.com and look up our AstroTurf uh, uh, rugs. Justin Hyde is here, my good friend. And Justin, let me tell you, I made this my pick of the show for good reason, because I am telling you now is the time, if not, you're right around the corner that you need to start tilling your soil. Now, why do we till our soil? Well, I'll just tell you this. Anybody out there that has a beautiful, great growing, gorgeous garden has probably either hand tilled mm -hmm. or shoveled or raked or pitchforked their soil. Yep. The reason they do that, and I'll let uh, Justin get into more of it, is because your plants need a little help to get them roots going down in the soil. <laughs> if it's all compacted from winter and weather, they're not gonna thrive. You're, they're gonna struggle. And this takes out all the work of digging and shoveling and raking and all that because it's all about soil preparation. Uh, Justin, welcome to the show, my man. It's always, good to see you. Always good to be I'm garden. giving him a little bit of distance because he's got a power tool in front of him, That's but right. you'll notice this is electric. There's no gas, no pull start, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Squeeze the trigger, it's not noisy, and look what it does to that, so wow. How yeah. close can you guys get? Because I'm telling you, I think this, yeah, that's what I want to see. There you go. Look at that. So tell me this what this is. This has got power. What's this doing? So, yeah, a great question. When it comes to soil, soil is alive. Just as your plants that you're planting are alive, there's microorganisms and they need to breathe. And the best way to do that is to aerate it by tilling your soil. So whether or not it's brand new soil, your brand new gardener, or it's that old garden that you really yeah. wanted to rejuvenate, maybe there's sod. We just showed you a video of the sod. Now you can till and you can also cultivate. By doing that, you're eating up all that sod and you're not having to grab that hand till anymore. We can. We we always say tilling can be a pain in the butt. It's a pain in the back, right? Because we're normally doing it by hand. Now, this is such an easy way to start eating up all that soil and now rejuvenating it, adding that air into it. And then what's great about it too is 
Now you can actually maneuver your soil because once we really have now aerated all of our soil, now you can walk over here, whether or not you're using your shovels, whether or not you're using your rakes, and you can see just how yeah. the soil Will really you? just starts to break apart. It's not Do that again, anymore. Justin. I want everybody to look at what the soil looks like after you've chopped it up. Right. Tw twigs and leaves and all that get incorporated in the soil. Remember, that's all good and that will become soil. Right. But it's not going to do that if it's in, you know, eight inch pieces or 20 inch, you know, two foot pieces. You need to break it up. Look at how dark and rich because, and, and by the way, this is just a chunk of ground that's out here in our set. This, I mean, this is really, this is really the ground out here, believe it or not. <laughs> exactly. This is really, like, we didn't dump this dirt in it. This is real ground. This is real, this and, is real ground. And it's never been really fertilized or anything, right. but it shows you how when you aerate it, now mm. those roots can get down in there. And that's the other thing. When it's compacted, and guys said this, it's hard for your little baby seedlings to be able to grow. They need to be able to have soft soil to do that and be able to put their roots in. The other thing that's great about this is, is weeding. So what this will also do is eat up all those weeds. Yes. But it's also bringing those weeds seeds from deep down because these are eight inch blades yeah. up so that you can eat, take those out easier. Let me tell you, this thing weighs only 16 pounds. In fact, um, we, we have, sh is it Cheryl? Cheryl on Facebook right now owns this. She's had it for a couple years and she said, and this is her word, it's amazing. And it's, and it's, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a powerhouse, she called it. I mean, it is. I mean, look at it. And yet, remember, you're not having to haul around a big giant machine. You're not doing it by hand. You are not bent over. You simply hold it and you allow it to do its work. Yeah, that's the other thing. At 16 and a half pounds, it's like 10 pounds less than what you'd find on gas powered. Yeah. It's a lot easier. You're not cranking. Right. You don't have to worry about mixing gas and oil. You press a button, which is your little safety feature. You press that little green button and then you pull the trigger right here. So once you pull that, push that down, pull the trigger and that's it. You plug it in and then you go. That's the best part about this is no prep you have to worry about. And the other thing too is the size. You don't yeah. have a giant garden. This is great for a, if you have above the thing. ground garden. It's not heavy. Or if you have, if you have, you know, about four by four, if you want to just build a small little garden in your backyard. Box garden. Yeah. Right. So now this is a great size to be able to do that and maneuver it around instead of having yeah. a gigantic tiller. I, I actually, I have one of these machines and I got mine was last year, the year before. But anyway, I, I use it to kill weed, to get rid of weeds. Yeah. And I go around the beds and I don't have to bend over and I don't have to pick it up because I'm not, I am not a fan of using chemical things to kill weeds. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe, you know, you've all heard all the different things that can, you know, it can be a dangerous thing. You want to stay away from that stuff if you can and go more natural. This has the built-in blades, the cross-cut blades, which will actually chop up weeds and incorporate. Remember, they're living matter, but it'll chop them up and it'll incorporate them back into the soil. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully they won't grow again, but you don't have to worry. I mean, you don't have to bend over and deal with that stuff because trust me, weeds are going to come back no matter what you do. <laughs> but this is a way to get rid of them and bury them into the soil at the same time. Aaron, you said I had a thousand uh, to go. I have 700, a little over 700 left. If you can get one thing to prep your garden beds, I would strongly recommend this. And listen, I know it's 129 bucks, but think about the shoveling, the digging. You know what my dad used to do to me? Where'd you go? You, uh -oh. know, my dad, uh -oh. you know what my dad used to do to me? <laughs> yes, God. God bless him. <laughs> you know, bless his soul, my father, wonderful guy, but he loved his garden to the point where he would take, he was a hunter and a fisherman. Uh -huh. He would, when he would go clamming or he had fish bones, he would put the fish bones in a pile with leaves in the back. It was his, it was the mulch pile. My <laughs> brother Darren and I couldn't stand it because what he would do is he'd say, and this was twice a year, yep. you got to go out and you got to pitchfork the mulch pile. Right. We'd have to, because you have to shovel it and you have to aerate it and mm -hmm. mix it. And we would do that by hand. It would take us like three or four hours each. It was hard work. Not only that, well, you had those there was all kinds of stuff in there, like shells and roots bones. Roots and rocks and, and bones. That guy's and... garden was <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Andy in the neighborhood, everything grew in his garden because he was he was using churned up right although he had manpower to do it for him I would have well, taken my labor. brother would have taken that thing in a second. Free labor helps. I know, I know. What but are you but do? the big thing is when you're tending your garden, you are incorporating all of those other things, right? Of course, you're aerating your soil, but when you want to aerate and then incorporate your uh, yeah. additional topsoil, maybe even that fertilizer. So what I just did was put a little peat moss. Oh yeah. And then what I'll we can do way. is just simply mix so all that up into the soil. Let's wait till we get a close up and we'll show you. All right, that's great. Thank you, Mikey. Okay, so watch what happens now. We don't have to use a pitchfork. Look. Look at how it, oh, look, all incorporated. So now if I wanted to put 
Should I put a little fertilizer in there too? Is that what this is? Yeah, the little shake and the little shake. So if you want to do this, remember fertilizer doesn't mm -hmm. do you a whole heck of a lot of good if it's all on top, right? Right. So I'm going to sprinkle that down and watch what my man can do. Look at it. That is awesome. So now you've you know, added it deep into the soil. Yeah. All of that's going to aerate. You're now really thinking about it. You're so, brand new soil. It, it, and you see, you know, uh, easy to be able to handle. Much. I mean, if you can, if you can use a shovel, you can use this even easier. Yeah. We are uh, on our Facebook page. We have Janelle. Hi, Janelle. Um, anyway, Janelle says she loves her tiller. Yeah. I love that these are there are a lot of ladies calling us mm -hmm. today. We're doing gardening um, because normally you think this is not. It's not a job you want to do. This is actually a lot of fun. And when you see the color of your soil, in fact, Janelle. Janelle's upset because her family keeps <laughs> borrowing it and she can't use it all the time. Well, get your own. It's only $129. Uh, <laughs> it's on FlexPay for $25.99. I now have $675 left of my original 1000 So I'm so glad you're getting this. And I will tell you, you know what? If you, don't have a, if you don't have an HSN credit card yet, get it and I'll make this 119. How about that? We'll drop the price $10 with the, with the uh, $10 that you get. You put your, we'll put that into your account and you can use that on your first purchase today. So get an HSN credit card. But watch these guys use this machine. And even if you're trying to get rid of grass and, and you know, make a garden bed, mm -hmm. look at how this guy's going right into growing grass and creating a trench. And then look, you can build a box around it if you wanna do like, you know, tomatoes in a real garden right. in the ground. You could do that, but you don't have to worry about planting and digging and shoveling because the soil will be so soft and aerated that stuff just pops right in. Yeah, and I love that they're showing the sod too because that's usually what all of our gardens maybe look like or maybe you're starting a new garden. Yeah. It's the fact that this is gonna be that tiller to be able to eat all that up, whether you got the, the rocks underneath, right? Yeah. Maybe you have hard clay or the, the ground starting to thaw. This is why springtime is really the perfect it time to right do it. It goes right through rocks and stones, doesn't it? But it, 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 does, does. it never gets Those stuck. Those are steel tines. You don't have yeah. to worry about that. It's gonna eat them all up and the rocks are gonna bounce off. But now again, that we've aerated it, the soil is so easy to manipulate, right? Right? Instead of that hard packed soil where you can't really get your yeah, hands into it. It's got all it, the, the roots is, and everything. Look at it. Right. So if we want to be able to just dig down a little bit and plant our, you know, we got basil right basil. here. We got that. If we have rosemary, all of these different things now, you know, whether it's your seedlings or you already have them pre-made or, or, you know, pre-grown. Yeah. And you can go ahead and just start digging those holes now that we have already aerated all of everything that we're working with here and now just simply plant it. Again, if it's packed in soil, this is going to be really hard to do. Mm -hmm. This is what you're spending most of the time doing. Yeah, and this is, we, we have to tell you, this is what professional farms do. Have you ever seen, have you ever watched any footage of that machine that comes in and it's a big knife? right and it cuts through the soil and what does it do it spins it like in a circle that's a big tiller that is loosening the soil so that they can drop the seeds or the plants and when you buy leaf and petal from us from rochelle i mean she's got these beautiful plants but if you you you, you can't plant them in hard pack you have to plant them in the soil that's loose it's how i mean plants breathe and, and yes. live and get nutrients, not only from the sun, but from the soil. Yeah, as important as watering your plants are, it's just as important to give all of those plants the air and all those seeds. But all of the microorganisms that's in your soil, right? It's kind of just a, a whole nother world under there with your earthworms, your microorganisms, and your nutrients that we're adding that might already exist. Now you're really giving it the life that it needs, and you're also eating up all the other stuff in there. Right here, we've got all the roots that we just took out of well, there. You can see okay. them. Look at this. This is, this is what you're getting out of there. You're getting all those old roots that are gonna be, uh, you know, that your, your seedlings are gonna be fighting against. You're getting those weeds and those other seeds that we don't want inside there that are gonna be fighting when you're watering your plants. You want those to get the water. You don't want all the weeds to get the water. Yeah. So you're weeding, you're cultivating, giving that air, you're aerating, you're tilling, and you're getting about eight inches deep into the ground. So plenty of room to be able to have that soil. And I love that it's electric. Plug it oh, in, yeah. squeeze a trigger, hit the safety button, and you're good to go. <laughs> I love that. All you need to do, you don't really need to clean it. If you want to rinse it off, I guess you could, but the nobody cares. Leave, leave a little dirt on there. Get some Looks dirt like you're on using there. it. And guess what? It comes with a two year warranty. I, I love I love Earthwise. They're such a great company. Yeah. We, we've got um, some lawnmowers and things that are going to mm -hmm. come up as we get a little bit later in yeah. the year. Still a little early for cutting grass, but it is not too early to till your soil. Get it incorporated, especially about, about a third of the country is already getting into all that. And before you know it, in another two or three weeks, springtime will be here where you live, and you're going to wish you had gotten this machine. I just got an update from um, Aaron, my producer, who says now less than 600 
of these to go around. So if you want it, get it now. You'll only pay $25.99 on FlexPay. If you don't know what FlexPay is and you're new to shopping with us, all that is is a way to pay, a pay for part of it. You get the product, but you just get to try it for 30 days for $25 plus your shipping and handling and tax, your first payment, and then your other payments will be $25.99. The minute you get this, you'll see there's no learning curve. All, all you do is you hold it and yeah. give it a little bit of resistance. And that's why I feel like a lot of... run away from you, right? right? I feel like that's why a lot of women love this is because you know what? It's not like an ox that's pulling you. How much does it weigh again, bro? Six and a half pounds. Yeah, that's that's ten, nearly 10 pounds less than what you're gonna find with any of those gas powered. Yeah. And speaking of power, this does have the power to be able to get in there till you simply push that button it's quiet. and start getting it's into pretty work. quiet too. That's Love the other thing. Motor. You let go of the trigger, Turns off. It's off. You're not, you're not, you're not, you know what? Your neighbor's <laughs> off in the morning right. <laughs> for running a big loud machine. There they go again. Yeah. And by the way, eco friendly too, because it doesn't go, give off any emissions. So you're doing good for your you're land. You're not spending any more money on gas nah, oil. You're doing good for your neighbors too. So uh, great it while you can. Uh, again, Justin, great job. Thank really, you. really great demo. Love Thank that. Uh, thanks so much. Am I, I'm going to walk over. More mail. Just, uh, hold on. I got more mail in there? No. Thing up. I don't know if that flags down the guy. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me on uh, Gardening with Guy. Remember, I'm going to be back here uh, next week at 8 a.m. on Saturday. I'm not sure what we're going to have in our show, but uh, we always seem to have something that's pretty exciting and pretty fun. So for all you gardeners out there, remember what I say to you. Gardening should not be stressful. If you're stressful and you're gardening, you're doing it the wrong way. Garden with Guy, that's the way to get rid of your stress. I know my good friend Brett Chuckerman, he likes to garden with Guy, but right now he's busy. So check him out. I'll see you next time. Guy, yeah, you know, you put the, the flag up when there's mail you want taken out. Did you put a letter in there?